Hi there, nice people. How are you doing with your brand new box of crayons? I know. You've broken some, and you're dis disappointed, and you're trying to talk your mother into buying you a new box. Well, if you can do that, that's fine. But I'll tell you what. Mr. Mahuto usually comes to class with a shoebox full of broken crayons that people want to throw away. Because probably nine out of ten lessons can be done with the crayons broken at very length and the paper removed. I can use a point for that as well as the ones that are brand new. So when you break your crayons, peel them off and save them in the box. That's, you'll see all the different things we can do in a lesson today. Let me show you, first of all, how you hold your crayon. If I take hold of the crayon, and I'll, once in a while I watch someone grab it this way, it won't work. All right, not because you, you can't put the pressure down the way you need to here. So what I need to have you do when you do this is get it between your two fingers and your thumb like this, and then make your line this way or this way. Now you watch all the things I can do by doing that. I'll put my crayon down on a piece of paper, straight up and down, right on the side, get a hold of it, and pull it down. And who says I can't make a straight line? All right? Now, depending on the size of your crayon, if I put my crayon sideways here, again, thumb in the middle, and pull down the paper, there you can see the wide line. On this situation, then, it depends on how big a crayon you're using a lot of times to see how wide a line you may want, all right? Now I come to a stroke that's real, real pretty, and that's where I put the crayon down, up and down the same way before, but as I pull it down the paper, I'm going to twist my wrist and straighten it out. You'll see as I do this now. Press heavily. And by the way, in case you, when it comes time to do this for you, you may want to stand up so you can press a little harder. See that twist? And straighten it out. Look at that beautiful stroke. Stem, here's a post, here's a leaf. Uh, maybe it's even a uh, real fancy airplane. Here's a wing coming off on the side and a wing on the other side. You see how you can work with your flat crayon? Really neat, really neat. All right, the next stroke over here is like a burst. You take your crayon, you're going to hold it, you're going to go up and down and twist your wrist, always keep making, you know, a straight line. Watch this one now. Up and down, twist, twist, twist. See that? Now, I don't want you, when you practice your stroke, to turn your paper because it's very important. A lot of times you're working on a mural in some place and you just can't turn that whole mural around. So I want you to get in the habit of doing this with your hand that way. All right, looks like fireworks, I know, or some flowers. Here's one now that's called scalloping. I go up skinny, pull along sideways this way. Oops, I just broke my crayon in half as I'm holding, I'm really squeezing onto it, okay. Then you see, that's a scalping. I keep going all the way around. Yes, it does look like a heart. Here, all right. Yes, yeah, somebody's figuring out that I've got something there. It looks like a butterfly. Right-o. <laughs> all right, but that's called scalping. And let me get another crayon because that one broke for a moment. Watch this stroke. I'll take the crayon, put it down, and twist all the way around. And see the nice circle I get out of that? So it looks like wheels, looks like eyes. If you go along and make sections, they look like little butterflies, or it looks like rope, or sitting in front of a Charlie in class right now is Mary with pigtails. <laughs> and so that looks like pigtails. See, all those strokes can be had, and I would like you boys and girls to try a lot of different strokes when you get your crayon to see what other ones you can do beside mine. See, I'm not taking and drawing for example, a tree with the point and going back with my crayon and filling it in. What I'm actually doing is putting that crayon on the side. Watch, I can get that tree again. I'm using this explosion kind of stroke, this flare stroke, and you see that nice tree? I can get equally as well that way. All right, let me set this paper aside for a moment and bring on another practice sheet because I'm now going to get to a stroke that I really, really like. Watch me carefully now. Before, I had my crayon, and I held it between the two fingers with my thumb in the middle. This stroke, I would want you to slip so your thumb is very close to one edge, all right? Because now, as I work, I'm gonna be placing more pressure there, and I come up with something we call natural shading. Watch as I do this. Put the crayon down, 
put my thumb closer to one edge and pull it down and look at that. See how dark it is on one side and how it just fades away on the other? Here we go, put my thumb on this edge, pull it down, look at that natural shading. Put a little base on the bottom, still flat crayon, I did not raise it up. I think what I'll do just for a moment, I'll take the point of it and draw the top so you can see that maybe I've made a glass. But see, you get the feeling that it's nice and round, don't you? All right, this next one I'm going to make a round ball and again I'm going to put the crayon down on the paper, think the circle, put my crayon on the outside, or my pressure, my thumb on the outside, and here I go. <clears throat> and you see I run out of room, I can't make my arm go any further, so here goes with my thumb on the other edge. Look at that. Feels like a ball, like I'm, I can actually pick it up and have a bowling ball and go bowling this afternoon. <laughs> this could be, make that in a bowling, you know, bowling pin. Watch now though, if I take and put my crayon down again and think of another circle in the middle, but now I put my thumb closer to the inside instead of the outside. Watch this. Mm-hmm. Ooh, isn't that neat? Neato. Look at that. I've got a donut. This is the highlight, and it looks like it's round. There's a shadow in here and a shadow here. Glass of milk and a donut. Boy, is that neat. That's a stroke I would want you to practice any time. Now, there's a lot of different things you could make with that. I put my thumb on the outside over here like this, and look at this. If I'm making a spaceship or something, natural shading. See the form of it? Windows on the side. Maybe this could be a jet airplane with wings going back. I get my tail up here, you see? Any number of different things that can be done with that particular stroke. Side flat crayon, using your crayon around the side can give you a lot of pictures. All right, now let's say that I go ahead and start to do my regular picture that I want to do. Going to do a bowl of fruit, but you could choose any picture you may want to do. And if you didn't like to, as you get started, you may use a pencil, but use it very lightly, all right, so you don't see the marks. Actually, when I make it, you probably won't even see my marks. I'll get the large bowl of fruit here and get the shape of it. The only thing I worry about Sometime with you working with your pencil, first of all, you think that when you start to work with your crayons, if you go off the line, you made a mistake. And I don't want you to worry about that. All right, here I go. Put my crayon down on the paper, pressure on the outside part, press down, see how that looks. Yes, I know that when you do it, if you wish, you may stand up so you can press a little heavier with your crayons. All right, there it is. I'm not going to do anything with the top for just a moment because I am going to show you some technique called overlapping. All right, there's a little stand here. All right, I think right now I'd like to put a pineapple in here. I think of the pineapple as sitting in the bottom of the bowl. As I do, I'll start it down here, but I won't press. But when I get to the top part, then I'll start to press and get my pineapple. Yes, you see, I didn't draw this first. No, I did the bowl to get myself started. You feel that that's right down inside the bowl? All right. And now some leaves. Here I go with some light green. Here's some leaves coming up over here. Then they branch off to the side. Come down. All with the side of the crayon. And if I would like to have heavier shading on one side of the leaf, and go along again with a darker green crayon. There we go. Can you see how those colors will come out? A little heavier? Yes, and of course, if you have um, a pineapple here, you see sometimes lines in it like this. They go across technique here, like a pattern. I can do some more shading on that. There might be, oh, let's see, a banana down in here. And I'll come to this edge. Put it inside the bowl. Press heavily there. Make your banana wider. There we go. And I'll use a uh, darker color crayon maybe just to give it some shadow. Here's some orange on here. 
and maybe a little bit of brown for this top part. Use a crayon on the side to make those lines in here. Mm -hmm. How about an apple? This time, watch now. The bow overlaps banana in here, but I'll take this time and do my apple as I do it. Boy, this is a real rich apple, isn't it? <laughs> Here, I'll add another color in here, red. See how it comes along over here like that? It has a nice shadow, and it, it's partly behind the banana, partly down in there. And with the brown stem and some leaves. I'm putting my thumb on the outside edge as I go along, and it gives me some natural shading. Righto. Behind here also is an orange. I can only see part of it. See how I get what we call overlap? All right, let's see. Because I have the bow like this, I'm going to come along here now and make some grapes or cherries overhanging the bow. I know as you go along and do this, you'll say, oh, mine aren't turning out to be exactly round or something like that. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice. See, there's some over here on this side. And you can go along and take, let's see if I can find a violet color here, a little deeper color. And I can put some additional shadow here. There we go, a little, the blue I'm using blends with the red and kind of gives a little bit of shadow. Also, maybe this blue would be real good for some plums. I like plums. And here's some plums in here. See, I have the overlap there you see how that's going you can build your fruit the, your fruit bowl the way you want to go along now i go back with my dark brown i'll turn my paper a little bit so i can go here and press along the top line and when i hit the grapes i stop and come out the other side like this last of all i want to go back give it so appearance is on a table. So I give a kind of tabletop, and watch as they come down with these lines. This gives us a little perspective. Hey, <laughs> and some lines across here. Now you choose your own picture, whatever you may want to do. So I can go along in here now and fill in some of these areas to make it look like a checkered tablecloth. I'm using the side of my crayon, people, and look at the nice picture I can get. By the way, all these practice strokes are shown in our art guide. And as you open up your book, you'll see your teacher will have this or it'll be in your school. All the practice strokes are there and what materials to have. And they'll refresh your memory as to how the lesson ought to be done. Well, there we have it, flat crayon drawing. I hope you'll enjoy doing your picture as well, okay? We'll see you again next time. How about it?